We are now in the last month of the year, buddies. Sa mga naranasan natin sa loob ng halos siyam na buwang community quarantine na sinabayan pa ng mga ilan pang kalamidad, deserve naman natin na mag-enjoy at mag-release ng stress. We got you buddies dahil sagot na namin ngayon ang mga exciting virtual travel at dive adventure pati na rin ang mga kahanga-hangang kwento at pangyayari na may kinalaman sa ating karagatan. One, two, three, go! Shipwreck sa Apurif ating babalikan. Sighting sa mga endangered Hawksbill sea turtles sa Apurif dumami sa panahon ng lockdown. Isang rare albino rhesus dolphin spotted sa Bohol. At ang scuba diving journey ng isang kahanga-hangang wildlife photographer and conservationist na nagsimula dahil sa isang aquarium. Tara na buddies! as we uncover this extraordinary and inspiring story. I am Cindy Maduma, and this is The Dive! Una sa ating itatampok ngayong araw ay ang isa sa world's best diving destinations na matatagpuan sa Pilipinas ang Apo Reef Natural Park. Kamusta na kaya ang world's second largest coral reef system ngayong may pandemic? Tara, at silipin natin ang ganda ng ilalim ng dagat sa diving mecca of the Philippines with your dive guide. The World Travel Awards is the most prestigious honors program in global travel and tourism. And today, we will reveal our world winners, the highest accolades in the World Travel Awards program. Our next award is for the world's leading dive destination. And the winner is the Philippines. Patapos masungkit ang titulong Asia's Leading Dive Destination 2020, muling kinilala ang bansa bilang World's Leading Dive Destination 2020 sa 27th World Travel Awards. Nanguna ang ganda ng underwater paradise ng Pilipinas sa iba't ibang dive destinations across the globe. Ito na ang pangalawang pagkakataon na makuha ng bansa ang nasabing parangal. Kilala ang world-renowned dive destinations ng archipelago bilang tahanan ng highest concentration of coral reef species at immense diversity of marine animal species. Ilan sa mga dive spots na ito ay ang Tubataha Reefs Natural Park sa Palawan, Apo Island sa Dumaguete, at ang ating dive destination for today, ang Apo Reef Natural Park, the second largest reef system in the world. Hello everyone, this is Bernadette Romulo Puyat. Tourism Minister of the Philippines. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to everyone who chose us for the 2020 awards for the world's leading dive destination and Intramuros as the world's leading tourist attraction. We look forward to the day when we can welcome you here once again to experience these destinations. Thank you and mabuhay. Hi, good morning guys. We woke up around 5 o'clock in the morning to prepare for things needed for the liveaboard to um, Upper Reef. And it's like three hours ride from Upper Reef Club. So guys, <clears throat> watch out. To 
celebrate, we will take you back to a remarkable diving escapades we had in Apple Reef Natural Park. Bago ang coronavirus disease 2019 outbreak, nagkaroon ng pagkakataon ng The Dive Team to experience the unmatched bliss triggered by the underwater beauty of this ravishing place. Ang marine wonderland na ito ay matatagpuan sa Sablayan Coast sa Occidental Mindoro Province. Since July 20, open na po ang Apple Reef Natural Park pero sa mga local tourists pa lang ng Occidental Mindoro. So we're not yet accepting tourists from outside the province including the leave of our boats. So hindi pa po kami tumatanggap ng mga turista na hindi galing dito sa loob ng probinsya. This is according to the guidelines of the provincial IATF wherein local tourists lang ang dapat i-cater ng mga tourism sites dito sa Occidental Mindoro. For the protocols, um, fina-follow namin yung general guidelines ng DOH like social distancing, wearing of face mask and we also enforce the 50% capacity, carrying capacity in Apo Island. So before we have 104 packs per day, so right now we only accept 52 packs. In 1996, nang idiniklara ni former President Fidel Ramos ang Apo Reef bilang isang protected natural park. Ibig sabihin, ito ay protektadong tirahan ng mga mahahalagang hayop tulad ng seabirds at endangered species of plants and marine animals. At mahigpit na ipinagbabawal ang anumang human extractive activities sa lugar tulad ng fishing at coral collection and harvesting. Mahigit 15,000 hectares ang lawak nito at mahigit 11,000 hectares pa ng water area na nakapalibot dito ay itinalaga bilang buffer zone kung saan kontrolado rin dito ang mga human activities upang masigurong maingatan ang protected area. Binubuo ang Apo Reef ng tatlong isla, ang Cayos del Bajo o tinangkapang na may rocky coral formations. Ang Apo Minor o binangaan na isang rocky limestone island. At ang pinakamalaking isla sa natural park ay ang Apo Island na mayaman sa mangroves at beach vegetations. Second largest reef system in the world ang Apo Reef. Sinusundan nito ng Great Barrier Reef sa Australia. Pero ang Apo Reef naman ang pinakamalaki sa buong Pilipinas, kung saan nabubuhay ang napakataas na marine biodiversity. Halos 200 coral species at 285 fish species ang makikita rito. Tulad ng School of Jacks, Tuna at Giant Napoleon Rasses, iba pang reef fishes at sea turtles. Sikat din ang dive destination na ito sa mga pelagic marine creatures na makikita sa ilalim ng dagat. Kaya ng mga reef sharks at manta rays. Kaya naman isa ito sa mga top destinations na paboritong bisitahin ng local at international divers. Uh, ngayon po, meron po tayong identified na 16 dive sites sa Apo Reef Natural Park. Sina-showcase ng mga dive sites na to. Meron tayong dive sites na tinatawag na Shark Airport. So, makikita dito yung uh, iba't ibang uri ng pating kagaya ng white tip at saka black tip. Meron tayong Apo 29 na maraming mga table corals. Meron tayong dive sites around Apo Island. Doon naman makikita yung iba't ibang uri ng marine resources like turtles, manta rays, and uh, diverse na uri ng mga corals. We are in the middle of the ocean. Uh, everything is here. Hammerhead, manta rays, eagle rays, pink yellowfin tuna, uh, turtles, uh, gray reef sharks, hammerhead sharks. Up next, throwback dive adventures ng the dive team sa shipwreck ng Apple Reef. Sightings ng endangered hawksbill sea turtles sa Apple Reef tumami sa panahon ng lockdown. At isang rare albino racers dolphin spotted sa buhol. Meron ka bang extraordinary encounter with marine creatures? I-share na yan sa social media at gamitin ang hashtag TheDivePH. Tara, sa 
ating throwback dive adventure sa Shipwreck of the Upper East. Guys, welcome for your last dive for today. This is our third dive. We called Shipwreck. Kita sa lalim ng 12 meters lamang ang shipwreck na ito na tinatayang nasa 20 years nang nakalubok sa lugar. Nabalot na ng mga corals ang shipwreck at nagsalbi nilang tirahan para sa mga marine animals. Apoy Club is the only TOT accredited establishment in our municipality. We are international resort. Let's say 95% of our customers is from abroad. Meaning with this pandemic, we have completely no business since last March. Meaning for us, of course, no business, no income. No income means for the government also no taxes. There's a huge chain uh, involved in this pandemic. It's not only uh, us, or of course, our staff. We have normally during the high season around 25 employees. Now only three is working. So the whole community, uh, the suppliers, the government, everybody suffer with that pandemic. We're trying to work hard with uh, DOT to help us to open our province because right now our province, Occidental Mindoro, is still close. We only can have guests from the province, Occidental Mindoro. And I think maybe less than 10 people are divers in our province. So who gonna who gonna go? Who who gonna be our guest at the moment? Nag-start kasi mag-glow sa Apolif noong March 13, 2020 and uh, nag-reopen lang kami noong July 20, 2020 pero with restriction. So, simula noong March hanggang ngayon, wala kaming income. Estimated at around 4 million yung nawala kay Apolif and more than 2,000 na number ng guests na nawala sa amin. positive impact naman po ng lockdown on the environment or the ecosystem ng Aporif Natural Park. Mas mataas yung recorded natin ng turtle sightings ngayon. Most of the turtle na naglilay doon ay green sea turtle or hawksbill turtle. So we have recorded a total of 38 turtle sightings in Apo Island alone as compared to the 15 sightings last year. So, mas mataas siya and nanonotice din namin na yung mga area na hindi dating pinupuntahan ng mga turtle, ngayon ay pinupuntahan na nila. The management of Apo Reef has closed some parts of the Apo Island kung saan naglilay yung ating mga turtle. These areas na identified namin na pinaglilayan ng turtle, dati na siyang sarado. So, dati na siyang restricted area. We just have to enforce it even more na bawal na talaga siyang puntahan. We also plan na paagahin yung ating lights off sa Apo Reef kasi turtles are laying their eggs or umaahon sila from the sea during night time. So our future plan for Apo Reef Natural Park is to implement the green fins approach, the guidelines for sustainable diving and snorkeling. While walang bisita si Apo Reef, nagkakaroon ng series of action plannings and meetings ang ating opisina para mas makita natin kung ano yung mga naging issues before with regards to ecotourism and paano natin siya masosolusyonan ngayon. We also plan to have a stronger linkage with other stakeholders like the private sectors para mas makatulong namin sila pagdating sa conservation ng Apo Reef. Kasi ecotourism and conservation sa Apo Reef is magkasama na yan eh. Hindi na pwedeng paghiwalayin yan. So hand in hand, dapat nagtutulungan yung private sector na nagdadala ng turista sa Apo Reef at nagtutulungan yung DNR and LGU na magkoconserve naman sa Apo Reef kung bakit nagkakaroon ng maraming turista doon. 
you're waiting to welcome them, to go out again and have fun with them and dive with them. And we're all excited to go out with our guests. We hope that soon the province is open and we can welcome everybody again. Once na mag-open na po or mag-grant na po ng IATF ang reopening ng Aporif, iniimbitahan po namin kayo sa Aporif Natural Park. You just have to visit our official Facebook page at ARNP Official and the website of the Municipal Tourism of Sablayan, amazingsablayan.net for more information on our reopening. Sa nakita nating pagbabago sa Apo Reef, lalo na sa endangered hawks bill na batatagpuan dito, masasabi nating may positibong epekto rin ang travel restrictions na ipinatupad bunsod ng pandemya. Isang indikasyon ito na kung malayang makapamumuhay ang mga endangered marine animals sa kanilang natural na tirahan at malilimitahan ang human activity sa fragile ecosystem ng mga protected area gaya ng Apo Reef, mas magagampanan nito ang kanilang ecological value bilang tirahan ng mga endangered species. Kind marine encounter experience sa isang pod of dolphins ang ibinahagi sa atin ng isang netizen mula sa Bohol. At ang mas nakamamangha pa, isang rare albino ang spotted sa nasabing pod of dolphins. See up close the ocean beauty and marvel at the wonders of creation. So na tayo nakita ang dolphins Yeah, we were just scuba diving 10 minutes after surfacing. We noticed these parts of dolphins, so we decided to follow it with a small boat. Bohol is already known as one of the beautiful islands here in the Philippines. And Bohol is, all, is said to be one of the breeding ground of these social animals. Actually, we were not expecting because we would thought it's just the same dolphins that we saw normally here in Bohol. But then with seeing one albino, it was one of the most memorable experience I had. I'm looking forward to see more of resource dolphins here in Bohol. And I hope that the government could continue to educate the locals to protect our marine life so we could see the same experience in the future. Pagiging albino ay isang napaka-rare na event. Merong dalawang case na tinami na isa ay albinism, ang isa ay musism. Ang nangyayari, may iba siyang coloration. So in that context, puti siya o hindi lumabas yung actual pigmentation. Yung albinism naman, on the other hand, is congenital anomaly. We're in my partial or my total deficiency ng melanin, which is a pigmentation sa ating skin, sa ating mata, or part ng mata, na poroid. So, ayun muna ang kailangan natin ginawin. Because sometimes, pag nagbibideo tayo, nakakakita lang tayo na maputi, and we see maybe albinism. Pero kaming mga scientists, we have to see kung ano yung kung mata talaga ay pink, and that's a, a true albino. But if it's black, then it's just musism. Pagka nagkaroon ka ng kakaibang sitwasyon, siyempre mahihirapan ka mag-survive. Una kakaiba ka, mahihirapan ka mag-hirap ng partner for reproduction. Also, kung tunay kang may albinism, albino ka, yung pigmentation ng mata mo hindi rin kumpleto. So, mahihirapan ka rin ng vision. That will weaken your chances of capturing prey. Ang karaniwang uh, threats sa uh, mga typical na mga marine mammals tulad ng resource dolphin ay bycatch. Nahuli sila aksidente sa fishing gear, entanglement sa mga naiwang mga nets or uh, lines. Nakakakain sila ng mga plastic kasi nga uh, squids ang kanilang typical na pagkain. Pag ang mga plastic na sa tubig ay ang action niya ay uh, para din squid. And of course, pollution. Sa Pilipinas, isa sa kanilang threats ay sila ay napuputukan ng dinamita na nagdudulot ng malaking hadlang sa kanilang survival. So ngayong meron tayong pandemya ng COVID, may, may alam na natin ang mga tinatawag nating swine flu, bird flu, hindi malayo sa future na magkaroon tayo ng fish flu o pag wala na tayong mga naglilinis ng mga hihinang isda na tayo na mismo ang makakakain nito in the future. So ito po yung isa sa mahalagang uh, roles ng 
after they were tulad ng dolphins and birds. Nililinis sila yung mahihinang klase sa mga species, sa mga populasyon. Up next, scuba diving journey ng isang kahangahangang wildlife photographer and conservationist nagsimula dahil sa isang aquarium. Meron ka bang extraordinary encounter with marine creatures? I-share na yan sa social media at gamitin ang hashtag TheDivePH. Alagang isda sa aquarium ang naging dahilan kung bakit naging professional scuba diver ang isang wildlife and conservation photographer na si Greg Yan. Tunghaya ng kwento ng paglawak ng mundo ni Greg kasama ang mga marine life. Sama-sama tayong ma-inspire through Diver's Eye View. Mahilig kaming mag-alaga ng isda sa aquarium dati. And this began when I was very young. Yung nanay at tatay namin, mahilig rin sa isda. Kaya meron kami aquarium. And when I was very small, puso pa yung saltwater aquarium. So pumupunta kami ng Cartimar in Pasay City, which is still the hub for saltwater fish. Tapos bumili sila ng dalawang clownfish. May seahorse pa nga nun. Tapos may starfish na alala ko pa yung aquarium na yun. Hours and hours, nakatitig lang ako doon. Captivated by the wonders presented by the sea. So, dahil sa pag-aalaga ng isda, talagang namulat ako at naumpisahan ng aking lifelong interest with oceans and with nature. Advocacy communicator by profession si Greg. Isa rin siyang wildlife photographer. Many years later, nakapagtrabaho ko sa isang napakagandang conservation organization called WWF. And WWF is an organization that does lots of very good marine conservation work. Ngunit naisip ko, kapag hindi rin ako makababa sa karagatan upang makita kung anong nangyayari sa ilalim ng tubig, ang maiintindihan ko lang ay kalahati ng istorya. So I decided that the only way to really go down and understand the full story on marine conservation is to learn to study scuba diving. The first time na nakababa ako sa isang coral reef, it was like a dream come true. Because for so many years, nakikita ko lang ang mga aquarium fish sa aquarium or sa mga libro. And then to see them out in the wild, face to face, minsan nag interact pa kayo. Titingnan ka nung clownfish, makikita mo face to face. It's such a magical experience. Na you feel like you're part of another world. You feel like you're flying. Hilig din ni Greg ang mga underwater cleanup dive. At isa pa sa mga pinakapaborito niyang gawin while scuba diving ay ang pag-aralan ang mga nakamamanghang behavior ng mga isda na dating sa aquarium niya lang nakikita. Primarily, when I go down during a dive, I'm there to either study fish or invertebrate. I remember that there's a very cool program called the Reef Check Eco Diver Program. This is being led by another group uh, headed by Sivani Vergara, good friend of mine. And then they train scuba divers to be able to conduct research in different coral reefs around the country then. So this is a good example of what we call citizen science or using a typical activity that you would do anyway and generating useful information na baka magamit ng ating scientists and policy makers to be able to better protect that area. So more often than not, if I'm diving, I'm usually studying fish. Each of them has a very specific and very important role to play in keeping the marine ecosystem in perfect balance. Marami tayong halimbawa, tulad ng cleaneras. They are medyo silvery blue fish with a black stripe na horizontal. Tapos mapapansin natin sila kasi minsan pag nagda-dive tayo, makakapansin tayo ng mga isda na parang nakapila. Sila nakapila? Ito yung ginagawa nila. Kapag tinignan natin, minsan nakabukas yung kanilang bibig. Tapos may cleaneras na pumapasok sa bibig. Tapos hindi nila kinakain. Bakit kaya? Ganun. Lumalabas pa dun sa hasang. 
And so I got interested in cleanerases. And then we found that cleanerases serve a very, very important function for coral reef fish in that they pick off parasites sa mga ibang isda, even animals like marine turtles. Ginagawa nila to. So just by having cleanerases in a coral reef, nag improve yung health ng lahat ng nakatira or dumadaan doon. Dahil sila ay, kumbaga, doktor o dentista ng ating karagatan. Marami pang ibang isda ang mayroong beneficial roles tulad ng angelfish or butterfly fish which serve to eat some parts of coral which is not all that bad sapagkat kung tayo ay gardeners may intindihan natin na constant pruning sa mga halaman is actually pretty good sapagkat yung halaman na magmumukha parang damo kapag lagi mong pinuprune liliit siya tapos magiging very bushy which is actually far better for their growth so all of the fish na makikita natin, meron yung very important contribution to keeping our reefs healthy. Dahil nga naman sa cute na cute at makukulay na mga isda tulad ni Nemo, marami ang dahilik sa aquarium fish. Pero dahil naa-appreciate ni Greg ang ganda ng mga isdang nakikita niya sa dagat, unti-unti niya namang nakita ang disadvantages ng saltwater aquarium fishing. Although nagbibigay siya ng livelihood sa maraming kapwa Pinoy natin, ito rin ay posible maging unsustainable. Sapagkat, number one, ang karapihan ng saltwater fish na nahuli dito sa Pilipinas ay namamatay within one year of the time na mahuli sila sa isang coral reef up to a year from now sa isang aquarium. Ito ay dahil gumagamit pa rin ng maraming mga manginisda ng cyanide. And they can also get other animals na bawal kolektahin tulad ng mga taklobo or giant clams tulad ng coral naging sentro ng unsustainable and often illegal billion dollar global aquarium industry ang Pilipinas dahil ito sa mataas na foreign demands ng ornamental fishes ayon sa datos umaabot sa 5.7 million aquarium fishes ang inexport mula sa bansa patungong United States noong 2005 dahil dito tinagurian bilang largest supplier and exporter of aquarium fish ang Pilipinas. Ayon din sa mga pag-aaral, sa bawat sampung isda na hinuhuli para sa aquarium trading, isa lamang rito ang maaaring mabuhay hanggang makarating sa isang aquarium tank. Nangibabaw naman ang advokasya ni Greg towards protected and sustainable marine resources. Dito na buo ang kanyang advocacy campaign na Best Alternatives. Ang Best Alternatives ay isang grupo na nag-aaral kung paano maging sustainable ang trade natin sa marine aquarium fish. Kahit pa ang kapalit ay ang kanyang hilig mula sa pagkabata, itinigil niya na ang pag-aalaga ng saltwater fishes sa aquarium. I took it upon myself to walk my talk. Hindi ako nag-aalaga ng saltwater fish at nag-shift ako to other types of fish like freshwater fish or yung mga isda na sina-farm. So that's one. Number two, if you really want to keep saltwater fish, pwede naman po talaga. Pwede naman. Let's just ensure that we keep hardy species or yung mga klase ng isda na alam nating hindi madaling mamatay sa aquarium. Ito ay ang mga damselfish. Ito yung mga mura lang eh, called very colorful. Ito yung mga rasses. Gobies, blennies, marami iba't ibang halimbawa na even yung lionfish, hindi naman ganun kahirap alagaan yan eh. By sticking to the species na madaling mabuhay, mapapababa natin yung massive mortality rate ng saltwater fish globally. Let's make sure na hindi tayo mag-aalagan ng mga illegal na hayop tulad ng giant clams or corals. Because live corals are illegal. Hindi lang din ang mga challenges sa ornamental fish trading ang nahanapan ng best alternatives ng grupo ni Greg, pati na ang iba pang challenges sa seafood trading, aquaculture, and agriculture. Ngayon, meron din tayong maraming solution sa aquaculture and agriculture to be able to ensure that the resources we need like food, water, medicine ay nakukuha natin sustainably or yung mapapagkakitahan rin ng maraming tao at the same time sapagkat hindi kailangan maging exclusive or magkalaban ang environmentalism at economics or ang pagkita ng pera at pagunlad. Pwede po natin silang maggawa ng sabay. At yan ang filosofiya ng Best Alternatives. 
Ang scuba diving journey ni Greg ay nagpapakita sa atin na ang totoong ganda ng buhay ng karagatan ay ang natural na kalagayan nito. Kahit gaano pa kalaki ang aquarium o kahit na gaano pa kalaki ang halaga ng perang ibibili mo ng ornamental salt fishes, hindi hindi nito matatawaran ang natural na ganda ng ating dagat. At kung makikita natin ang halaga ng karagatan, tulad ni Greg ay hindi lamang alternatives, kundi ocean of discoveries and possibilities para mas mapangalagaan pa natin ang ating karagatan. This is your diving buddy, The Dive! Sa The Dive!